Hello! Let's continue with chemistry. It is all that matters. And today we're going to talk about ionic bonding. Now an ionic bond is an electrochemical bond formed between a metal cation and a non-metal anion. And we remind ourselves that if we look at the metalloid staircase, that everything to the left of that staircase is a metal. Everything to the right of that staircase is a non-metal. Metals typically become cations by losing electrons and becoming positively charged and nonmetals typically become anions by adding electrons and becoming negative charges. So let's remind ourselves of that process. So here we have a sodium atom, atom and we have 11 protons, 12 neutrons and two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, one in the third shell making 11 electrons. Now, sodium is not happy, it is not stable, because it has that extra electron out in that outer shell, so it will gladly get rid of that electron. When it does that, it actually changes its value to 10 electrons versus the 11 protons and becomes a positive one cation, Na positive. Now here we have a chlorine ion, our atom actually, and it has 17 protons, 18 neutrons, and 17 electrons. Two in the first orbit, eight in the second orbit, seven in the third orbit. Now that third orbit is missing one electron. So that extra electron that um, sodium wanted to give away, well it's floating out there in the environment, and that will gladly be picked up here by Chlorine. When chlorine does add that extra electron, it actually changes its value to 18 electrons, giving it one more negative than positive and making it a negative one anion. So now we have positive cations from the metals, we have negative anions from the nonmetals. Now, as I said before, an ionic bond is an electrochemical bond and it's electrochemical because we now have an electric charge of positive on one atom, an electric charge of negative on the other atom, and when we have opposites they are attracted to each other, very similar to the way magnets when you put the north pole to the north pole of a magnet they repel, you put the south pole to the south pole of a magnet they repel, but if you put the north pole to the south pole of the magnet they attract. So when you have a positive electric charge on one atom and a negative electric charge on another atom and those charges are equal, these atoms will bond together. So we end up with a situation where we have NaCl. It is now neutral, no charges anymore, because the positive Na cation is neutralized by the negative anion of chlorine and this becomes sodium chloride, also known as table salt. The same table salt you put on your french fries to make them tasty. Now, whenever you name an ionic bond, an ionic compound, the metal keeps its name and the non-metal will take on the suffix IDE. Now this is always the case for what are called binary compounds. Binary compounds are compounds created by only two elements, two atoms, or sorry, two elements. So since we only have sodium and chlorine, we have a binary compound of sodium chloride. Let's take another look at an example of, here we have magnesium, Mg, positive 2, cation. Fluorine is a negative 1 anion because it is in the halogens very similar to chlorine, it will take on that extra electron, but these charges, although they are opposite, are not equal. So in order to make them equal, we actually need a second fluorine ion. So now we will have two negative ions to match the one positive ion, and that will give us a formula of MgF2. And now there are no charges on this because the two negative fluorides actually 
neutralize the positive magnesium. Once again, the metal keeps its name, magnesium, and the nonmetal takes on the suffix IDE, making this magnesium fluoride. Let's take a look at this example of aluminum and chlorine. Aluminum is a plus three cation, and chlorine we've seen before is a negative one anion. But because their charges are not equal, they are only opposite, we're going to need to add some chlorine. So we will have to add actually two more chlorine to make it three chlorine, and those three chloride ions balance out the one aluminum ion, making a formula of AlCl3, the three negative one chlorides balancing out the one positive three aluminum, and as with all binary compounds, we get aluminum chloride, the metal keeping its name and the nonmetal taking on the suffix IDE, aluminum chloride. Now let's look at one, a molecule or a compound with a transition metal. Now here we have iron plus three and oxygen minus two. Now you'll notice that we have iron as plus three and in the transition metals we have always looked at the transition metals as being plus two in their normal state but with transition metals they can take on more than one charge so what we have to understand is when they're they have this other charge we're going to name them slightly different so if we look at this we have plus three and minus two so if i add another oxygen i now have minus four which is greater than plus three. So I can add another iron. Now I have plus six. So I will add one more oxygen giving me minus six. So for the case of iron and oxygen, where iron is plus three and oxygen is negative two, we have to find where they balance their charges at six. So we have plus three and plus three making plus six minus two minus two and minus two making minus six or negative six and that gives us a formula of Fe2O3 Fe2 two irons three oxides the name is iron Roman numeral three oxide because iron can be plus two or it can be plus three so to signify when it is a plus three ion you use the Roman numeral to represent or tell us that we have a plus three ion. So here we have copper. Copper again is a transition metal and in this case copper takes on its standard plus two form but copper can also come in as a plus one ion. So in this case copper is going to match up with two chloride ions making CuCl2 and when we name it, we're going to identify the plus two charge as the Roman numeral two. So this is copper two chloride. The metal keeps its name, copper. We signify the charge with the Roman numeral. And then we name the nonmetal with the suffix ide, chloride, copper two chloride. So here we have a PDF of a series of ionic compounds and we are going to ask you to go ahead and print this out and go ahead and write out the formula for each of those compounds. And then the second page of that PDF there is a series of, of formulas and we are going to ask you to write the name of each of those formulas. So go ahead and print those PDFs out fill them in, and then come back and see how you did. So let's see how you did. We've got potassium fluoride, and I'll just pull these out like so. And we have potassium fluoride is going to be Kf. Potassium is plus one, fluoride is minus one. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, Kf. Calcium chloride, calcium is plus two, 
chloride is minus 1, so we need two chlorides, CaCl2. Iron 2 oxide, this tells us that iron is plus 2, oxide is oxygen, negative 2. That goes together in a 1 to 1 ratio, positive 2 to negative 2, FeO. Iron 3 oxide has a plus 3 iron with a negative 2 oxide, making it Fe2O3 because we need 2 plus 3s from the iron to balance 3 minus 2s from the oxygen. Magnesium sulfide is plus 2 to minus 2, 1 to 1, MgS. Tin 4 sulfide. Sulfide is negative 2, the tin, because the Roman numeral is plus 4, so we need two sulfides, SnS2. Copper chloride is CuCl2, that's the same as the example. We have, actually no, this should be CaCl1. So let's go ahead and fix that. We've got CuCl. It should be a one-to-one -one ratio, so I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this. Come down here, and we're going to erase the, so the subscript. Now it's correct. Copper chloride, Cu1, chloride negative 1, CuCl. We have iron sulfide, Fe2S3. Calcium oxide, CaO, magnesium phosphide, Mg3P2, magnesium is plus 2, phosphide is minus 3, silver chloride is AgCl, now silver is a unique one because silver should be a plus 2, but it actually takes on a positive 1 charge, and you do not have to use a Roman numeral with the silver, it only comes as plus 1. Aluminum oxide, Al2O3, Beryllium nitride, Be3N2, sodium iodide, NaI, magnesium bromide, MgBr2, and lead 2 iodide, PbI2. So let's look at how you did with the naming. So let's check your answers. We have MgF2 is magnesium fluoride, CaS is calcium sulfide. FeBr2 is iron 2 bromide because bromide is negative 1 and you have two of them. The iron would have to be plus 2. And in the next one, iron 3 iodide, iodine is negative 1 and you have three of them, so that would make iron plus 3. Magnesium oxide for MgO, tin 2 sulfide, copper 2 chloride aluminum sulfide, calcium bromide, calcium phosphide, nickel 2 chloride, aluminum chloride, potassium nitride, sodium fluoride, magnesium iodide, and lead iodide. So hopefully you did well on that. You're going to need to practice this. This is something that's going to stay with you the entire semester, in fact, for the rest of the year in chemistry. So knowing how to name compounds for ionic, metallic, and covalent will be key to your further understanding of chemistry. It is all that matters.